Weird World Building is a series of so far only two, but I'm working on it, videos wherein I needlessly overanalyze certain aspects of world building in various anime and manga, going into what implications they may hold for that specific setting or story. Today we'll be tackling one of the biggest shonen around, My Hero Academia. Let's begin. Number 1. See if you can guess where I'm gonna go with this one. During the entrance exam, it's established that less than 1 in 300 applicants pass and join the UA Hero Department. For reference, the initial number of students, including those that enrolled through official recommendation, number 40, 20 from class 1A and 20 from class 1B. This implies that around 10,000 plus or so students attempted the exam. Additionally, as a quick reminder, the test consisted of the applicant destroying primarily three types of robots, each worth a different number of points. This along with a written test, but no one really cares about that. Now, the point of all this is the following. Considering the combat-oriented nature of the practical test, the fact that the robots worth one point are capable of demolishing walls, and the huge pool of examinees, I have to ask. How the hell did Koda pass the exam? The guy basically has the power to control animals, which can of course be enormously useful in a variety of situations, but how in the world did he manage to pass this particular exam? His quirk is not combat oriented, he himself does not seem particularly mobile, and considering his personality I can't imagine he left a strong impression on the examiners. Not to mention, the exam took place in an urban setting and the examinees only had 10 minutes at their disposal. I personally just don't see it. Number 2. Let's quickly talk about the exam itself and how clunky it actually was. However, as I don't want this to be my longest and most in-depth point, I'm basically gonna rapid fire this one. A. How many millions and millions does one exam like this cost? You have an enormous urban area filled with streets, buildings, windows, posts, high-tech robots and so on, which get absolutely demolished during the exam. I'm sure cementos can greatly assist in the restoration with minimal costs, but not everything is made of cement. You've also got steel, wood, glass, electronics and so on. Plus the post-exam cleanup, my god. B. Speaking of high-tech robots, what's the deal with those? A one-pointer can smash through a wall, but is destroyed by a single shot of Yuga's laser. They're also apparently programmed to be threatening, but are safe enough to not actually seriously harm the examinees. Alright, with tech like that at your disposal, why would they not be used for more practical purposes? Now, to be fair, we have actually seen similar robots recently in the manga guarding a very high-tech facility. However, considering the hundreds of robots that were used during the exam, it's obvious that creating most likely lower quality models isn't a big deal. Would not it then be much more practical to create fewer, higher quality ones and have them be used by the police force or pro heroes, thereby making them much more efficient rather than using them as glorified punching bags? C. I'm very much skeptical of the overall safety of the exam. You've got 15 year olds firing off their quirks all over the damn place, one of them being Bakugo, mind you, robots going wild, debris and glass falling everywhere. It really does seem like everything but a controlled environment. Also, even if there were some safety measures in place, they obviously weren't that effective. After Deku wrecked his uh, almost everything and was falling down from dozens and dozens of meters, the only thing that saved him was Raraka in the last second. His plan was to break his fall by breaking the only limb that at this point did not look like it was made of paper mache, but even he stated that he could miss the timing and face plant the street, which could easily mean death. Even in that situation there was no indication that anyone was going to help him, and he basically lucked out that Raraka was in range and had just the right quirk to save him. Number 3. My Hero Academia quirks are magic. They absolutely have to be at this point. There are a variety of ways you could argue this, but let's go with this one. Quirks like Bakugo's Explode, Deku's One for All and Shoto's Half Cold Half Hot completely obliterate the law of conservation of energy, which is kind of a no-no if you want to keep things non-supernatural. Think of it like this. Look at the body as a system which has a finite amount of energy to work with which it for the most part gains from consuming food. 
groundbreaking stuff, I know. That energy then fuels all of the basic things we need in order to function, our basal metabolic rate, as well as everything we do throughout the day, with certain activities requiring more energy than others. Now, it's been established that quirks are really extensions of one's own being, in that they can almost always be trained to get stronger some way or another, akin to bodybuilding or mastering a skill. Now, how many calories do you think this uses up? Or this? Or this? Or this? Probably a lot, right? For a bit of reference, this is 100 kilograms of TNT. I'm pretty sure Bakugo can create bigger explosions than that just by being taken by surprise by an unexpected fart, especially because his explosions are nitroglycerin based, which actually has a slightly higher detonation velocity than TNT. But let's nonetheless use TNT for this because the numbers I needed were easier to find. One kilogram of TNT releases a bit more than 2 million joules of energy. On the other hand, a Big Mac contains around 2300 joules. On an average training day, Bakugo, Shoto and Midoriya, to name a few, probably individually release millions and millions of joules. Bakugo and Deku are especially blatant examples, because we can plainly see the level of force they exert when utilizing their quirks. Uh, this is true with Shoto as well, but with Deku it's probably a bit more intuitive, without me needing to talk about the amount of energy needed for the enormous exothermic reactions Shoto has displayed. Not that I actually could, but I know people who could, which is just as good. Now, I want to make something clear. This whole, uh, breaking the law, breaking the law, of conservation of energy isn't a new thing in a series with superpowers at all. It's kind of almost needed, unless you want your characters to be eating high calorie meals 8 hours a day non stop and then die of cholesterol by the age of 25. The reason I'm bringing this up is because, thus far at least, it's been established that quirks aren't really supernatural in nature. They don't utilize ki, chakra, nen, nor are they gifted unto people by gods or demons or whatever. The way Horikoshi has framed them is more akin to mutations, caused by either a virus carried by mice, or perhaps a natural evolution of humans, or maybe even living beings in general, since apparently animals can sometimes awaken quirks as well. Either way, the point is that even though quirks pretty much behave as magic, they are supposedly not supernatural in origin. So far, at least. Number 4. Speaking of quirks, I don't think you actually need one to become a respectable hero. See, in the world of My Hero Academia, like many other settings of this nature, humans seem to naturally possess much higher potential with regards to their physical abilities. Knuckle Duster, for instance, a character from the Vigilantes manga, which is canon if I'm not mistaken, is quirkless, and yet due to his amazing physical prowess, is oftentimes mistaken as someone with a strength-enhancing quirk. On a potentially even grander scale, Endeavor has an emission-type quirk which allows him to manifest and control flames. However, despite his quirk not giving him an obvious boost to his baseline physical traits like strength, speed and durability, he has all of those in spades. The man tanked multiple concrete walls, a numerous amount of quirk enhanced hits, and falls from tremendous heights, yet he survived nonetheless. This, again, not because of his quirk, but his insane physical constitution. My point being, with at least initially average physical traits, the right training regimen, lots of effort and potentially some aid via specialized equipment, I don't see why a quirkless person in the My Hero Academia universe couldn't become a distinguished hero. Sure, they'll never reach the heights of All Might, Endeavor or Hawks, but just becoming a hero, I believe is very much doable.